Hi friends, so uh, I've had an endless stream of questions from you as our parishioners, um, in many ways phone calls and emails and letters and uh, 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 Facebook posts and so on, asking when are we going to be able to celebrate the Mass publicly? Uh, I'm so sorry that we're going through this time and that we don't have access uh, to something that is our treasure and is the source and summit of our faith, and that's... Um, the Eucharist, and by that I mean being able to receive Him physically, to receive Christ physically in His body, blood, soul, and divinity. I've also heard from many of you of how this period of time of, um, of, of, of abstinence from the Eucharist and from the community of believers and celebrating publicly as, um, as, a, uh, as fellow parishioners have really increased your desire for going to church and um, for being together as a community of believers, for hearing the Word of God proclaimed. And, and most especially what I've heard most from you is how the love for the Eucharist has been reignited in you or ignited in you for the first time in many years. People are being very honest with me and, um, and how it's um, grown a passion and a desire for the Eucharist, uh, or just simply this, an appreciation for access to the Eucharist that um, hasn't been there for uh, some of our parishioners for years because we just have had access to it. And, and as the human element goes, we've, we've taken it for granted, you know? Uh, we've taken a, a, a advantage of the fact that it would always be available to us. So that's a good thing that has come out of this uh, COVID time, is this renewal of um, a desire for the Lord in the Eucharist. I just pray that in this remaining time that we are shuttered in our homes, that you make that a renewed prayer of yours, especially like, for instance, when you're watching our live stream masses and that little slide comes up for spiritual communion. That, that prayer is there in the hopes that um, you'll pray it and you'll renew uh, your desire to receive the Lord in the Eucharist. But every time you miss that, make it a prayer for yourself. And then this time will have benefited you, uh, maybe in many ways, but speci specifically in this way. Okay, so when can we go back to Mass? Um, I don't know if you've heard, you, you probably have heard by the time you watch this video, I know we sent it out in a flock note to you that um, confessions will be available again, and I've already done that in a separate video, and that um, going to Mass is going to be available pretty soon. So uh, what happened was our bishops of Ohio, and on these big decisions, they're meeting together to make decisions, um, and they had uh, uh, communications, conversations with um, our governor, DeWine, uh, about um, as he starts to stagger the opening of Ohio um, in stages, um, that um, our target date is going to be uh, the weekend, uh, the last weekend of May. So uh, the Saturday and Sunday of May 30th and May 31st, um, which really seems appropriate when we think about what we celebrate that weekend. And what we celebrate that weekend is the solemnity of Pentecost, when literally, literally, the disciples receive the Holy Spirit and they threw open the doors of the place where they were shuddering in the upper room and the place where they were hidden away from the rest of the world. And they, uh, and they started proclaiming the gospel again to the public and, um, and went out from that upper room into the streets and started bringing people on that day back to or closer to or for the first time in a relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's the day, in fact, that we celebrate the birth of the church, the anniversary of the church. So it just seems in God's providence, right, that this is the day that we uh, open up our churches again and we celebrate um, the renewal of church uh, as a people of God, and we celebrate the power of the Holy Spirit, and we celebrate um, uh, taking that faith that we receive in the Eucharist 
back to our families and this new or renewed vigor of the project and the enterprise of growing our church because our world needs our church, doesn't it? So what does that look like? Well, in conversations with our bishop, we're already starting to work on making sure that when we open up again, that we do it in a safe way. And, and I know that's what our bishop wants, and that's what I want for you as your pastor, and I know that that's what you want for yourself and for your families. So we're working on all the protocols right now. I'll, I'll review just a couple of them just to give you a sense of that, and I'm sure there'll be more that will be added. So, for instance, um, we'll make sure that um, we um, clean and, um, and, and sanitize the interior of our church, and not just on the weekend that um, you come back, but every weekend um, for the foreseeable future. So uh, we're going to need some of you as prisoners to help us with this, just like we're going to need prisoners who will be willing, again, to be lectors and Eucharistic ministers and so on. And we'll, we'll get back to you about that one. Um, we are going to have greeters at the door opening the door for you so there's less touch points for you. Uh, we're not going to go back to hymnals just right away. So again, that's not a touch point for you. One person picking it up at one Mass and you're at the next Mass picking up that same book. Uh, we'll continue, to, and thanks be to God, we have a projector and a screen. And um, so we'll keep those um, in storage for a while. Tell us safer to bring those back out. Um, we will not go back to re um, offering the communion cup, uh, uh, the blood of Christ just yet. And just remember, when you receive the body of Christ, you're receiving his body and his blood. So we won't go back to that just yet. And the sign of the peace will continue to do, but to do that in ways that are uh, verbal and um, nonverbal with gestures, um, but not um, actually uh, shaking one another's hands. Um, you can certainly do that among yourselves as family. Um, and um, we'll continue uh, to ask people to spread out among our four masses. Um, and just so you know too, um, uh, 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 three of our masses have about a third of the seating capacity taken up and only one of our masses has about half of that capacity. Um, so we'll always have enough space um, among our masses for um, families to sit together, because you're already together in your homes, um, but for others who are uh, not in regular contact with one another to have that space. And we just ask that you honor that as you come into the church, as you leave, and as um, you sit around one another. Um, so that'll be in place. And um, at the beginning of the Mass, we know we say um, um, uh, hello to one another and greet one another. Again, we'll, we can do that, but we can do that uh, keeping th that proper distance. And there's a host of other things that we're working on uh, to make sure that uh, we have a safe environment and keep that safe environment as we uh, work towards uh, a virus, you know, na nationally and, and globally, and, and we get things in a, in, in a, in a way in our society where um, people just feel uh, safer um, going out and being together in larger gatherings. Um, the bishop's working on, um, on a diocesan level a list, and so are the U.S. bishops. So I think between um, healthcare professionals that, and then specifically for church environments, our U.S. bishops, our Ohio bishops, and then um, I just met with um, our liturgy working group um, last night, and we came up with our own list. So we'll compare that to what's being done um, uh, on the statewide and national level and make sure we have a good comprehensive approach uh, to make sure that you feel safe coming back. And then, uh, just so you know, um, I've already uh, met with um, Matt Munhall, our director for m music and, and liturgy, and, and the tech team that he works with, and um, and uh, talked to the liturgy committee and parish council and staff and and um, and also our senior leadership team, and all of them unanimously agree that they want me to continue to do. Uh, the live stream masses, and I want to continue to do that. Um, and, and beyond the near term, into the long term, I want to continue to do it because um, we have a, we have homebound people. 
Um, and I've heard from so many people who, for different reasons, are in hospitals or nursing homes or just in their home, and they have underlying conditions or they have a frailty or something like that, where, you know, the last couple of years they haven't been able to go to Mass. Now, we've been bringing Eucharist to them for our Eucharistic ministers, but they haven't been able to go to the Mass, but now they have been. And I don't want to discontinue that, you know. Um, it, 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 it's taking care of the poor among us. You know, we have this great outreach to the poor through Catholic Outreach Ministries, but this is also a poverty, right? A, a, a different type of poverty, a spiritual poverty. We have to take care of the people who don't have that type of access. So we're going to continue to do um, live streams into the longer term. Um, but the nearer term, I want to continue to do it because not everybody right away will feel comfortable going back to Mass. You know, it's just where they're at emotionally or psychologically or where they're at physically and with their health, right? So we'll continue to do the live stream and make that available to them. Um, on a last note, along those lines, um, the tech uh, team and Matt were um, are in the church every night. God bless them. They have families and so on, um, and they keep social distancing, but they're um, in the ch main church right now running all the wiring to put up our new cameras and um, our new equipment up in the crow's nest and the choir loft and so on. And um, I've got some rehearsals with them this week. And um, my hope and my prayer is, is that by this weekend, we'll be able to live stream from our church. A lot of people know what our um, Adoration Chapel looked like, but a lot of people don't. Um, but they were just glad to be back in the church. Um, I think there are going to be a lot more people who are a lot more familiar with our main church and seeing all the familiar surroundings of our main church. Uh, I, hope, I hope you'll feel more at home. And um, so we're going to start that, uh, doing that in the main church this weekend and continue to do that until um, the 30th and the 31st. Uh, just pray that things continue to go well in our society and in Ohio and and in the hearts uh, and the lives of our um, of uh, people who are shuttered at home, and uh, that we we find a vaccine soon, and we have more and more tests for people, and and uh, and our society just starts to open up more and more. Um, if uh, for some reason the public offering of the mask is pushed into June, um, uh, as soon as I know, you will know, and um, we'll get that information to you. But right now, we have a pretty firm date of uh, the thirtieth and 31st and the feast of Pentecost and what a celebration it's going to be until then.